Hello everyone, <clears throat> welcome to another video and this video is going to talk about the career of the late great Sid Udi, otherwise known to the world as Sid Justice, Sid Vicious, aka Psycho Sid. Now on August 26, 2024, his son Gunner Udi shared a message on his Facebook page about his father passing away from cancer at the young age of 63 years old. And when I read that, um, it just came as a shock to me. Um, yeah, all because of the fact that Sid was one of the most intimidating presences to ever step into the ring. And he was a larger than life character. <coughs> Not the best wrestler, by far not the best wrestler, but Sid did have charisma. He did have passion, and he was a really, really good talker. And throughout his career, the guy went in there, and he was in there with so many big names, so many main event stars. He just had the look of a superstar. And one of the best big men ever, as far as charisma is concerned and just by the look the look alone he is an intimidating force and just the promos that he used to cut were just enough to scare the living daylights out of you he would start off with that quiet whisper and then suddenly burst into raising his voice burst into enraged anger and his promos in itself was scary. I used to be scared of Sid so much as a kid. But uh, in this video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit. I'm not gonna touch on everything, but I'm gonna talk about what I remember most as a kid by watching um, Sid as a performer and as a wrestler. So the first time I, um, I became aware of Sid was in WCW um, in 1989. I remember he was a tag team with Danny Spivey and they were managed by Teddy Long, the skyscrapers they were called. They had feuds with the Steiner brothers, with the Road Warriors, I remember that briefly. And then you fast forward into 1991, he came to the WWF and he was involved in the main event of SummerSlam 91, he was a special guest referee for the tag match with Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior against the Triangle of Terror, Sergeant Slaughter, General Adnan, and Colonel Mustafa. And he was in there and he was six foot nine and he was towering over everybody else in that matchup. He was a no-nonsense referee. He wasn't taking any shit from anybody. And probably like about a month prior, he debuted um, in the WWF, and I remember him <coughs> having a, um, he had a match with uh, Ted DiBiase as being one of his first matches, and um, he pinned DiBiase clean after the powerbomb. Um, anyhow, yeah, so Sid was the referee in that matchup at SummerSlam, and the fans were just going crazy at the sight of him. Here he was this big seven-foot guy, um, six-foot-nine, I should say, you know, has a ton of charisma, can talk, and he just has the look, he has the body on him of what he's fitting the mold of what Vince McMahon was looking for at that time. Um, at the time, he was also involved in a, in a short rivalry with Jake the Snake Roberts after Jake Roberts had attacked um, Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth at their wedding reception on that same SummerSlam. And I remember Sid came to the rescue with a steel chair um, shooing away Jake the Snake and The Undertaker, who was an ally of Jake the Snake. Um, Sid will also suffer an injury, and then later on he would re-emerge at the 1992 Royal Rumble. Um, so at the Royal Rumble in 92, we saw it come down to Sid Justice, Hulk Hogan, and Ric Flair. Um, the last three men, um, Sid, eliminated Hogan by fairly tossing him over the top rope and the sore loser that Hogan is he stands there and he cry babies 
Rocky crybabies to Sid, who's still inside the ring. And you can see Sid mouthing off to him, is every man for himself, big boy. And then Hogan from the outside just grabs the arm of Sid, trying to pull him and tug him over the top rope. And well, with the assist of Ric Flair, who was still inside the ring, he tosses it out. And Ric Flair wins the Royal Rumble and becomes the undisputed WWF champion. The fans were actually booing Hogan, but in future um, broadcasts of the Royal Rumble 92, they edit out those boos that was being directed to Hogan. And then at the end of that match, we seen Hogan and Justice, Hogan and Sid Justice go face to face. And a whole ton of officials came out to separate them. And they were just like in the ring staring a hole through each other. They really want, wanted at each other. Um, you could tell right there. And they were separated by so many officials. And one of the parting lines, Sid said, you got to get out of here, Hogan. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. You heard him say that. Fast forward later on to WrestleMania 8, Hulk Hogan versus Sid Justice in the double main event. Prior to this, Sid went on a rampage. He was just beating the crap out of these jobbers left and right. I remember he was putting them on, on stretchers, ramming them into the ring steps, just tossing them outside of the ring, slamming them on the concrete floor from the inside of the ring. At one point, I remember he broke Virgil's nose on the exposed turnbuckle, causing Virgil to wear a uh, nose guard. And he also went ballistic when he destroyed Brutus Beefcake's barbershop. You remember that segment where, where that was the barbershop when Brutus would have a guest and he would interview them about an upcoming match. Yeah, Sid just took a chair and he destroyed the entire barbershop, knocked the walls down, and you've seen the cocaine, well, <laughs> sorry, there was powder, there was powder that was on his face, um, resting on his nose, and it looked like it was a tremendous amount of cocaine that was there. It's, it was just hilarious. We, it was baby powder, but the way it looked, like when it flew onto his face, he was just screaming and Hogan, vowing how he's gonna destroy Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania. So anyhow, um, <clears throat> the match comes, Hogan was dominated by Sid at WrestleMania. Sid was just kicking Hogan in the gut. One-handed choke slam, side suplex, power bomb. Um, Hogan kicks out a power bomb, hulks up, delivers the leg drop and Sid still manages to kick out of the leg drop. And then we would see the referee would call for a disqualification. When Harvey Wolfman jumps on the ring apron, then Papa Shango would come down, starting beating down Hogan. And then the ultimate warrior music hits. And the place just erupts. That Hoosier Dome crowd in Indianapolis, they just erupt. And Warrior comes out, clotheslines Papa Shango outside the ring. Sid takes a chair to the Warrior. Um, and... No effect on the warrior, warrior no sells it, and Hogan grabs the chair from Sid, and Sid scours out of the ring, and then Sid had this stunned look on his face like, oh, these fucking guys. And then you'd see Hogan and the warrior would celebrate in the ring. A very memorable ending to a WrestleMania with the return of the warrior. And you know, Sid has it in the record books. I could say he was part of the special moment, which I find is a very special moment. In WrestleMania history. Shortly after this, Sid would leave the WWF in 1992 after um, he had a match with the Ultimate Warrior. I think it was a house show in late April. Um, they weren't seeing eye to eye with each other on the same page. That's why Sid would leave, as he later explained in an interview. Um, fast forward, Sid shows up in WCW. He was aligned with Vader, I remember. Um, Briefly, I don't remember too much about that, but he did spend some time in WCW. Him and Vader were allies, um, and they did team up in a War Games match against Sting and some of Sting's guys in um, the fall of 93, I remember. But then you fast forward, 1995, Sid is back in the WWF, and he is Shawn Michaels' bodyguard. And... He was in the corner of Shawn Michaels for Shawn's match against Diesel at WrestleMania 11. And the next night, we all know the famous thing, interview segment that took place when Shawn said, Sid, big man, I'm giving you the night off. And then Sid grabs the mic and said, you don't give me the night off. You give me nothing but respect. And then when Shawn Michaels wasn't looking, Sid clotheslines him from behind. And then the crowd, they popped for Sid. 
even though Sid was a heel, the fans, they really, really loved him, like, no matter what. I'm telling you, Sid was popular with the fans, um, no matter what. It's just, you know, amazing. Anyway, um, in this segment here, Sid would deliver, I believe, four or five power bombs, knocking out Shawn Michaels, um, keeping him out of action for, I think it was almost two months or something like that. Yeah, and then Sid would go on later to challenge Diesel at the first in your house in a match that ended in a disqualification for the WWF title. Then in July, they would also have a match, a lumberjack match, at the second in your house, which Diesel successfully defended the title against Sid. So you see, Sid had several main event credits to his name. That's why he was able to succeed wherever he went. And then... After that, you fast forward, September of 95, Sid versus Shawn Michaels for the Intercontinental title. Shawn Michaels wins with the super kick and sweet chin music. Then fast forward again to the Survivor Series 95. You got the wild card match. Ahmed Johnson, Shawn Michaels, Psycho Sid and the British Bulldog taking on Owen Hart, Yokozuna, Razor Ramon and Dean Douglas in the first ever wild card match. This thing was wild. Um, we had where partners and enemies were on the same team for the first time. Um, Sid floored Shawn Michaels with a power bomb after a super kick. Um, yeah, so Sid ended up getting eliminated as a result of the super kick for Shawn Michaels. Um, in early 96, Sid also suffered another injury. I believe it was a neck injury. Um, Oh, and by the way, around this time when Shawn Michaels and Sid was feuding against each other, Sid was part of Ted DiBiase's Million Dollar Corporation, just so you know. Um, Sid would not reemerge until later on in the summer of 96 when he teamed with Shawn Michaels, um, Ahmed Johnson and Psycho Sid against Cam Cornette in a six-man tag. Talking about Vader, the British Bulldog, and Owen Hart. Sid was back as a babyface and the fans loved him. They cheered him in that matchup, especially when he got in there. He was delivering choke slams and power bombs on all three of the opposition on Vader, Bulldog, and Owen. Um, even though Vader's team won the match, the crowd was going nuts for Sid. Over the next several months, Sid would defeat the British Bulldog at SummerSlam. He would defeat, I remember, um, an up and coming Triple H at the time on an episode of Raw. He would defeat Goldust and um, Justin Hawk Bradshaw and so many matches. Um, he was so many people he would defeat, including Vader, to become the number one contender for the title. And at the Survivor Series and Madison Square Garden, it all came to a head. Psycho Sid, despite perpetrating a heel move by attacking Shawn Michaels manager, Jose Laferio, Sid would defeat Shawn Michaels with the power bomb and capture the WWF Championship to a sold out Madison Square Garden who popped hard when Sid became the WWF champion. They popped hard for this man. They turned against the babyface heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, and Sid was the man. And you heard him gonna say, who's the man, who's the man, who's the man? And yeah, all these people, they were supporting Sid all the way. It doesn't matter. didn't matter if he was a heel or not. Then the following month, um, December of 96, at the In Your House event, December 96, Psycho Sid would also defeat Bret Hart in a really, really solid matchup. And yeah, Sid was getting that well-deserved push, man. He was it. He was beating guys like Shawn Michaels, guys like Bret Hart. And then at the Royal Rumble, he dropped the title back to Shawn Michaels in Shawn Michaels' hometown um, in San Antonio at the Rumble. That was a very, very good match, too. The crowd just made it even more electric. Um, then back to um, February of 90, 97 on an episode of Raw. After Bret Hart won the WWE title the night before at a pay-per-view at the In Your House Final Four event, Sid would reclaim, regain the WWF title from Bret Hart 24 hours later and become a two-time WWF champion. And heading into WrestleMania, he would defend the title against The Undertaker at WrestleMania 13. Undertaker would defeat Sid with the tombstone to win the title at WrestleMania 13. And then following the 1997 King of the Ring, the Road Warriors and Sid, they teamed, with o they teamed up to face Owen Hart, the British Bulldog, and Jim the Anvil Neidhart in a six-man tag. I think Owen Hart pinned Sid in that match with a sunset flip. And after that, pretty much, um, Sid 
wouldn't appear back in the WWF. Later on in 1999, Sid would reemerge in WCW. He would end up becoming the United States champion and by defeating Chris Benoit. I can't really remember exactly at what event it happened. Um, and Sid would also become the world heavyweight champion by defeating Kevin Nash. I believe on two occasions, Sid became the champion. So those are the things I remember most about Sid. Let's just note, in 2012, Sid returned to the WWE for a, for a match against Heat Slater leading into the Raw 1000 that took place in July of that year, 2012. So it was nice to see him come back um, and wrestle there just for that, that one-off appearance just one more time. So those are my memories of Sid. Um, Sid, for me, Sid was a, always a character, a very, very intimidating character, and one that you really, really appreciated and you feared. He made you shake in his boots. Just the sight of him alone was just intimidating. So I would like to say Sid Udy, Sid Justice, Sid Vicious, Psycho Sid, thank you for all the memories that you provided for us. And we appreciate all the moments, all the promos, all the times. And also guys, remember in 2001, that horrific injury that Sid sustained when he broke his leg from the top rope. That was just terrible, terrible to see. But once again, you know, Sid, he fought back and he came back and he overcame all of those things and he got back to his normal self once again. Um, yeah, but I like to say thank you, Sid. We appreciate you. We remember you well for your intimidating presence, your charisma, your interviews, your, your man, just your ring presence alone just says it all. Just look at you. Your ring presence says it all. Just want to say thank you for everything you've given us and thank you so much for all the moments, all the matches that you provided for us. And, you know, hopefully again, each of us, that day when we're called, we come across you again one day up there. So thank you, Sid Vicious. Thank you, Sid Justice. Thank you, Psycho Sid, for all the wonderful memories that you've provided us with in the WCW and the WWF over the years. Thank you, and we appreciate you so much. Rest in peace, my friend.